This 125 gallon reef tank has seen its fair share of problems. I mean, I've had a lot of things happen to this reef tank and I'm not just talking about the ugly phases. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the current state of this reef aquarium, a close look at some of the corals in the tank, and we're gonna see where this reef aquarium started and some of the progression that has led it up to this point. So let's get started. So the initial setup, everything looked great. And of course the transfer was nice and smooth for the most part and easy enough to get everything in this tank in the beginning. And then of course um, you go through those different phases of cyanobacteria and uh, hair algae and all of those different phases. I had dinos for a while. It took me a, three months or so to get rid of dinos if I remember correctly, but cyanobacteria, easy enough to defeat. You can use something like red slime remover. It works great, knocks it out in a couple of days. But then as your tank ages from a brand new reef tank to a more established tank, you need some time for that bacteria, the microorganisms that make up that diversity within your tank that does all the different processes that we don't necessarily see happen because it happens on a microscopic level you need time for all of that to develop in your tank. And so that's why your tank goes through different phases. I mean, we're adding corals to the tank, we're adding fish to the tank. There's certain things that come in on coral frags, on the corals themselves. Um, so we're constantly adding things to our system and it takes time for that system to develop. So this aquarium right now, at the time of filming this video is a little over a year and nine months old. And the current state of this aquarium, I would say is pretty healthy. I talked to Dr. Eli from Aquabiomics and we took a look at the microbiome of this reef tank. And if you haven't seen that video, I strongly recommend you check that out because Aquabiomics is jumping into the world of the unseen with being able to test for those microorganisms that do all the functions in your reef tank. So you can check out your microbiome and why it's so important. I'll leave a link in the description below for that. Okay, so I made it through cyanobacteria, through the hair algaes, through dinoflagellates, and there's still um, the test results come back that I have a lot of diatoms in the tank. And that is 100% true. So you can see I got some stuff going on the rocks and I have some stuff down in the sand bed. Now the sand bed is looking fairly clean because I just did a 15 gallon water change and I siphoned some of the sand bed and tried to get some of the surfaces of the rock, but don't ever underestimate just good old manual labor. Get in there and scrub your rock work, um, siphon some of that sand, but let's take a look at some of the corals in here. You see that right there, that is Aptasia growing in the middle of that zoanthid colony. So I'm gonna have to knock that out with Aptasia RX. But yeah, mostly on the sand bed right now is I have mushrooms and zoanthid corals. We got Kenya tree corals over here. Kenya trees in the middle. 
And the main Kenya tree forest is over here on the side. And here it is right here. If I walk around the side though, look at that right there. Look at that Kenya tree. Look at that green star polyp. The green star polyp is loving it. It's, he started down here and you can see how he's worked his way up and he is a pretty big colony right now. I have that small AI Nero in the back and he's keeping the water flow over it right there. And then I have that Higer wave maker over here on the side. So I have two pumps on this side for flow and then I have the AI Nero 5 on this side, the bigger one, keeping water flow going up there. We can take a look at the flow up top. Toadstool corals. Toadstools are still going strong. This guy has gotten a lot bigger since he's been into this tank. And I notice he's kind of splitting himself or something is going on down there in the middle. You can kind of see there's a hole right there. Every time I try to film it, a fish swims in the way, but you can see right here, there's a hole right there. So I don't know what's going on. Be splitting, but the polyps are out. Everything is nice and happy. This guy is still looking like that. He's a little, he's a little shoddy looking, but he's doing just fine. The clownfish like to go in between the toadstools. So these Ocellaris clowns, they love the toadstools and the skunk clownfish. They love the anemones right here. And I just found out that there are five anemones in there now. But the main issue right now with the reef aquarium is Aptasia. So I'm working on Aptasia RX taking those out. There's some big, look at that piece of Aptasia there. He is pretty big. And then Aptasia is ruthless. They will grow in between, around, through your corals. They do not care. Look at that. All up in there. There's some right there on that rock. So I have some cleaning up to do. And I already took out a lot of them that was on this rock here and down there with Aptasia RX. So Aptasia is on the hit list. Now, speaking of Aptasia and using Aptasia RX to eliminate the Aptasia that's becoming a problem in your reef aquarium, like it is in mine, there are multiple different ways to handle it. And I've made videos about that as well. And I will leave a link in the description below to those videos. But along with using Aptasia RX, I'm going to be getting peppermint shrimp for this tank. So I went to one of my local fish stores to pick up some peppermint shrimp and this happened. Okay, so they did not have any peppermint shrimp, but I did, I mean, I had to buy something, right? So I just picked up some Astria snails and a couple um, zebra snails in here. So we're gonna get these guys acclimated to the tank. Look at this guy, what is he doing in there? Uh, you always have a few that just wanna climb on everybody while they're sitting in the bag. Acclimate them to the temperature. So 
this tank has come a long way and I'm liking the direction that it's going right now. I need to do more cleanup, get that Aptasia taken care of, siphon the sand, do a little bit more manual maintenance to the aquarium and it's gonna be looking a lot better in a lot nicer place. I'm very happy with how stable it is. The pH, most of the time throughout the day, it is a nice stable 8.37. Um, and I attribute the stability of the 8.37 to Aquachar that I've been using because it helps balance some of that as well as the Kalkwasser that I am dosing. So instead of typically running a ATO that automatically tops off the tank with fresh water as it evaporates, I'm using Kalkwasser on a timer to keep those elements um, in check and to account for the evaporation that way. So it's keeping the tank's pH nice and stable above eight and hitting that 8.37 around the same time every single day. Um, it does go a little bit higher than that, a little bit lower, but it never goes to the 7.8 to 8.0 range that the tank used to sit at when it first started. So if you'd like to continue following me, I have some videos right here for you to check out. Go ahead and click here. Maybe that's the next step for you in your reefing journey. Thank you so much for watching this video. Remember to like, subscribe, and comment down below if you have any questions at all. And I will see you in the next one.